Hello YouTube and hello knife people. This is Joe with Ink and Iron and I'm here today to give you my first impressions and um, just a little bit of review of the CRKT Journeyer designed by Liang Ma. Uh, I just picked this knife up because it was on sale. Well, it's been on sale for a couple of years now apparently. Uh, so I'm like four years behind the curve on this one. Um, it's about 18 bucks on Blade HQ, and honestly, for what you get for your money, um, I think it's a really good price. So I'm just going to go over the basics of this knife with you today, and share a little bit about uh, you know what is going on up here, because um, I've only carried this for one day, and uh, something's up with this blade coating. Uh, but we will talk about that in a second. So let's get a weight. This is a pretty easy to carry knife, pretty lightweight. And let's see exactly what we're working with. 95 and a half grams. That's looking like 3.37 ounces. Um, my scale is slightly off. Um, it deviates about a half gram um, for 500 grams, so it's really not that bad. Um, but yeah, take my measurements with a grain of salt. It's always good to do your own. Uh, in terms of blade length, and I always measure uh, like a police officer would. You go from where the handle stops to the tip of the blade. So I'm going to try and find the greatest distance here. I'm going to call that three inches. And in terms of millimeters, it's about 77, 77 millimeters. It's a totally usable uh, EDC size knife. Ooh, excuse me. Um, this blade is kind of interesting. You have a thumb groove here instead of like a hole or a thumb stud. Um, it is pretty easy to deploy. You've got some, hopefully you can see this, Teflon washers. Um, so it, it's pretty smooth um, and it's going to be a pretty um, smooth action no matter what happens to this knife. Uh, Teflon washers are self-lubricating in a sense, um, so unless you get a ton of grit in there, um, it should deploy pretty reliably. Uh, we do have a swedge unsharpened. And I believe this is a hollow grind on the flat. It's kind of hard to tell. Yeah, I think you can just see that gap right there. I think it's a very slight hollow grind. Um, the knife cuts pretty well, considering that it's uh, kind of chunky. So let's see here, this is just a post-it note. Um, I will say I did strop this knife, um, so it like it'll shave hair um, because I ran it on my green compound strop over there. Um, it is a liner lock. Um, you've got this black wash on there, deep carry pocket clip, uh, semi flow through design, and full stainless liners, which are hard to see because they're actually nested in here. Um, yeah, but after a day of carrying it and fiddling it, um, I like it. I like it quite a bit. I think the grip is pretty functional. Sorry, I'm reaching around the camera here, so my hand is all wrinkly. Ooh. Um, I think you get good purchase. This G10 is not, it's not the grippiest G10. Like this is not cold steel um, style handle. It's not even, Spyderco really. Um, it's pretty smooth, but I don't mind it much because I don't think I'm going to be hard using this knife at all. Um, yeah, no, especially given the size of this blade. Um, the biggest thing I want to point out today uh, will come with disassembly. Um, and one other side note, I think, can you see that? This pivot screw sticks up just a little bit from the handle, so it's not like flush. There's a little thing right there, which is kind of weird. 
Um, that's sort of a fit and finish issue, but on a knife that is less than 20 bucks, I'm not too fussed about it. Um, we do have a kind of unique pivot on the back side, and it is not free spinning, which is really nice for disassembly. And uh, I just noticed this on the clip, this discoloration. I could not tell you <laughs> where that came from. I honestly have no clue. Um, yeah, but the big thing here today is this black wash, because um, it's about my biggest complaint on this knife. So here's like a microfiber polishing cloth. Let's see if we can just pick up some of that. Yeah, you see that? How it's getting darker right there? This coating, whatever it is, comes off. Um, yeah. So I'm not sure what's up with that. So let's get it disassembled and um, we'll see if we can remedy this problem. Uh, Cause this clip also happens to kind of get on clothes. Like I've noticed the pants I was using definitely had a sort of a black smudge. Well, it's not too bad right now. Maybe it's not gonna do it on camera. That's possible. I feel like that always happens when I'm shooting a video. Like, hey, let me show you this thing that always happens, and it just doesn't happen. All right, I'm gonna disassemble it. Um, for those of you who want to know, the pivot is a T9. I think you can see that there, hopefully. T9, and the smaller ones are a T6, T6. So yeah, and that's it. That's all you're gonna need to disassemble this knife and the clip screw, also T6. All right, I'm gonna cut it here, be right back. Okay, we are back. Um, when you disassemble this knife, just be careful of this. I believe this is the stop pin. Um, we'll check it out when I reassemble it. But yeah, that's about the only thing that might fly out. Um, I have disassembled this already, so you can see sort of my leftover lubricant. I like to lube up a knife pivot even if there is uh, Teflon washers or whatnot. Um, but yeah, this is a pretty simple construction. Um, it does appear that there are threaded barrel spacers through this back spacer, so that's nice. Um, so yeah, I mean it's not gonna Nothing's really gonna jump out of this knife necessarily, except for this little guy. So when you reassemble, just make sure, I would probably put it in here, put the blade in, and then flip everything back over. There's your washer, they're pretty, pretty chunky, honestly. And your nested steel liners. Again, a little bit of uh, oil on there. I'm not gonna worry about it. Um, no skeletonizing, so I suppose that could be a, a sort of future improvement for this knife. But yeah, let's check out this coating, figure out what is going on here. It appears to be a black wash, and then um, stone washed after that, like a blackened blade, and then it's um, run through some media to uh, kind of peck and lift off some of that coating. Um, it's fairly uneven on this knife, and I would just like to see what happens when I take a steel brush to it. Um, so yeah, let's find out. Hopefully, hopefully this, if this sounds awful, I will cut the sound. <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll find out. Is that lightening up? I, I honestly can't tell. Hmm. Yeah, there's definitely stuff coming off of there. All right, let me give the whole blade of ones over double speed here. Yeah, 
Yeah, definitely some stuff coming off of there. This is not a hard use coating by any means. Um, so just be aware of that if you're gonna buy this knife. Um, I, like for me personally, for under, God, even under like 50 bucks, I will modify the crap out of a knife to make it work for me. Uh, I'm not one of these people that's like, oh my God, I paid $25 for a knife and I need it to be perfect out of the box. Like I will work on it. I enjoy tinkering. That's just kind of my jam. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, I just washed this cloth and I'm gonna have to wash it again. Um, I did notice while I was fiddling with this, the grind is a little bit uneven. See how it's taller here than it is on this side. Um, doesn't seem to be affecting the performance, so I'm not gonna worry about it right now. Uh, when I eventually go to resharpen this knife, Perhaps I will uh, take it into account and try to oh, try to even it out. Uh, but for now, I don't care. I think it'll be fine. When you're tightening a pivot, always loosen it first. Wait for it to drop into position, then screw it down. That's uh, that's just hand tight, but honestly, that's not too bad. I don't think this will ever drop shut, but feels smooth, smooth as it did before. Uh, let's get a look at it. It's definitely lighter on the blade now than on the clip. Speaking of the clip, let's give it a once over. I'm gonna cut it here, I won't make you watch that. Okay, we are back, and I think I've got it to a point where I'm just gonna keep it as it is now. Um, yeah, I need to wash my hands, uh, but hopefully in the future this will stop shedding so much of that black paint, <laughs> whatever they used on this. Um, honestly, I like this sort of gray tone finish a little bit more, and uh, yeah, pretty happy with it. And for 20 bucks, I am gonna use the crap out of this knife. Um, you can see that that uh, wear at the tip seems to have blended in with the rest of it. Um, and that was pretty unusual to be there in the first place, which kind of drew my attention to the problem. Um, the only thing I had done was cut um, some cardboard and some like packing tape. So yeah, I felt it was pretty unjustified that the coating should start wearing off. So that would be the reason for this modification. Um, in terms of price point competition, I think the closest is going to be this other CRKT, the LCK. This is a fantastic knife. Uh, I really should give this a review. It's another hollow grind. Um, they are different sizes. I think if you're sort of, hey, my budget's 30 bucks, what can I get? Um, well, you can get either one of these uh, really good knives. So I think you're going to be all right. Okay, uh, I think that's all I've got for you with this knife. Um, if anything happens, I will update you and uh, let you know my experience. But uh, yeah, that's the CRKT Junior. I uh, really like the look of this knife. I think it's pretty industrial. Y'all have a good one, and I will see you on the next video.